Throughout the coronavirus pandemic, much of the nation's attention has been focused on densely populated cities. But the virus has also had a devastating effect on small towns. And we saw the dramatic impact on businesses in one small Pennsylvania community where people tend to know each other and the losses can feel more personal. But we also found that small towns might have a better chance of riding out this economic storm. Along Main Street, USA, stores are cautiously reopening, and some people are venturing out. But life is just not the same. On a normal day in June, would you be able to sit here at lunchtime? Absolutely and not. Just chat? No. <laughs> Nicole DeFour opened Quench Cafe in 2009 after the New York investment firm she worked for, Lehman Brothers, collapsed in the mortgage meltdown. She moved in with family here in Stroudsburg, Pennsylvania, population 5,500. And while the setting may be different, the feeling of financial loss is familiar, with revenue down 90%. So how, how do you pay rent? Just uh, by not paying myself. <laughs> really? So you yeah. pay for the building rather than pay your own salary? Yeah. yeah. Wow, so that's not that's not like a theoretical loss or business loss or loss on paper. No. That's like your loss. Yeah, it's 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 a significant and it's it's personal. Yeah, absolutely. It turns out everything is a little more personal in a town like this. Just down the block, Andrea Snyder lost thousands of dollars and laid off her staff at Jade Hair Salon. Twenty-five years you've been in business. Yes. Have you ever closed prior to this? No. no. Not when you had cancer. Nope. Two times. Not when you had cancer the second time. No, <laughs> never. When we stopped by, she was preparing for business to start up again. But her biggest loss from this pandemic is the kind she'll never recover. We did everything we could. My mother was surrounded by the most wonderful nurses and aides, and they brought her to the window when we went there to see her and try. You know, it's the hardest thing. It's the distance. It's, it's not being able to be with your loved ones, not being able to hug and kiss and tell them that you love them. After all she's been through, Snyder says she's amazed by the support she's getting here. If we can just hold it together, you know, we just have to hold it together. We, we have to keep our hearts in the right place so this way we can move forward. How do you think your neighbors are doing, your town is doing? You know, I mean, there are some people that are just not able to come back, but, you know, we'll take care of them. Everybody will gather around and we'll, you know, we'll do what needs to be done. That spirit, it seems, is a characteristic of small towns. A particular thing that people often are craving at this moment in American history, which is a sense of connection. James Fallows spent years visiting places other people drive past or fly over and along with his wife wrote a book on the topic. He says no other city has been impacted more by the virus than America's largest, New York, until now. The longer term concern about what it will take to rebuild, to uh, reattract residents, to restore small businesses, to regain a sense of momentum, that concern is more widespread in smaller towns and they think they have a longer road ahead of them. And what, if anything, about the qualities in small towns makes you hopeful they will survive? A town that has already been around for a hundred years or more has already been through a lot. It was through the Great Depression. It was through world wars. It's been through the financial shocks of the last 20 or 30 years. So people there know how to reinvent themselves. Their challenge will be to reinvent themselves yet again. Yet reinvention could be tough for people like record store owner Tom Lefevre. Record stores seem like they're partially about the people who come to them, the browsing, the talking with the guy behind the counter. Yeah, for sure. It's definitely a personal experience. That experience has changed a bit at Main Street Jukebox, a shop that's already survived, among other things, the age of digital music. So how long has it been since someone walked in the door like I just did? Uh, a couple months. Have you ever had anything like that before, like any kind of stretch where you just couldn't do business? I have, actually. 12, 13 years ago, I was across the street. That was where my business was, and there was a fire, and I lost my whole business. Wow. But I was down for probably a couple months until I got insurance money, and then I landed in here. 
insurance covers a fire, does it cover this? It does not cover this. H how did you feel when you found that out? It was, it was a big, uh, big shock, to be honest with you. I was kind of angry, too. The anger and sorrow along this main street isn't much different than anywhere else. But if you're going to go through a bad time, Nicole DeFore says this is a good place to do it. People are just asking, how am I doing? Because they want to make sure we stay around and we stay, you know, relevant and we get through this. And like, and you, I can feel that. I can feel that they really care when they ask me how we're doing. Like, how do you, how do you put a price on that? That's, that's amazing. So what also is amazing is the resiliency in these towns. I mean, Gail, we, we talk about Boston yeah. strong or New York strong or Houston strong, but there's definitely a small town strong out there as well. I love a good small town. Listen, I love Andrea Snyder's pigtails. Okay. When I go, if I go there, I'd want to go to Quinch Cafe to say hi to Nicole. Of all the places, how did you happen to pick that place? Go to the Main Street Jukebox? Looked like it's a great place. How'd you pick that place? We wanted to find a place that was within driving distance because we didn't want to get on a plane and that wasn't directly connected to some other major city like New York or Boston uh, and also had fewer than 25,000 people, which is kind of the threshold. Millions of Americans live in towns yes. smaller than 25,000 people, including my mom. You do get an incredible strength in a small community like that. And you know it's a good yes. community when they have a good record store. That's really, <laughs> that's, you know, a good one.